Senator Langford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I've learned uh, several things today, including that Senator King kicks dogs every morning, and <laughs> I was completely unaware of that. Uh, let, let me ask this panel a, a quick question, and it goes back to one of the heart of the questions Senator King was just bringing up before, is the deterrence. Let me ask it in a more specific way. What price should Russia pay for this type of interference? It's one thing to say we're informing our people. We're trying to do it rapidly. I've heard that uh, from several of you to say the speed of the information and the response is exceptionally important. Finding cooperation between legitimate media sites that they will actually help identify, here's, here's false, here's true, try to get that out. But what price should they pay? And let me, let me bring up why. When the Russians were cheating and doping their athletes, in a very short period of time, Russia paid a very big price for that by their athletes not going to the 2016 Olympics and saying, I know you trained, but you doped your athletes and you were caught for that. It's just been within the last 24 hours that their doping authorities even allowed to start testing their athletes again. They've been on suspension that long. They paid a price for that. We would hope that that would be a deterrent. What price should they pay for this type of aggression? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> this is a really difficult question, politically, legally, militarily. Um, and the main reason why it's so difficult is attribution. And even when intelligence services know how to attribute, they may not want to make that public. Um, and that is, a, that is the, the, the largest conundrum that we are dealing with here. So we may, I think, be looking at asymmetrical retaliation, as it were, political, economic, and I think the biggest price that Russia can and should pay is failure. Failure to undermine us, failure to undermine our democracies, failure to undermine our alliances. That is something we can do. And I think it is even more important because it's a consistently, it's a remaining vulnerability that is even more important than the question of retaliation. Of course, we and, and American and, and German and European officials have been doing this all the time is to make it very clear to the Russians that we know what they're doing, um, that we want them to stop, and that we have ways of reacting. But the actual legality and viability of symmetrical reactions is a huge legal and military problem, as I'm sure you know. Yes, and one, one of the things you mentioned before, Dr. Uh, Stilson Mueller, is that the export of LNG. That's something that was debated extensively here in Congress, and a large part of the conversation was not it, it, the, the conversation became this is about American energy companies uh, somehow being more profitable, while the Europeans were saying this is about geopolitical power. Uh, if you don't sell us LNG, then the Russians can turn the valve on and off, and they control a large part of Europe. Uh, for geopolitical influence, we need to do that. That became debated long term here, and then was finally determined yes, we're going to sell LNG, and now. Europe has another outlet, and Russia has competition on it, and is a benefit to our alliance and our long-term connection. Other other ideas that anyone would share as far as the price that Russia should pay? Well, if I may, actually, one of the things that they expect us to talk soft about these things, that's kind of, you know, part of their plan. There will not be direct, strong response. I thought uh, when Emmanuel Macron met Putin, in the way he did it in uh, Versailles was not a pleasant experience for Putin. So being direct instead of what they thought uh, will be this polite talk. Secondly, the machinery they're using against us is extremely important for Kremlin to control their own population. So if we are able to dismantle it, then we, in, we actually, as I've said, we bring in more truth into the internal Russian discourse. Other ideas and thoughts? I would just say, Senator, it's a really tough question for both President Trump as it was for President Obama. Can, right. can we find a pressure point that is as important to Putin as the integrity of our elections are to us? And I think Constanza is right. That's probably going to be asymmetric. Okay. Maybe to add a, a sentence that uh, at the introductory was mentioned that Russia's goal is to drive a wedge between the EU and, uh, and the US. I think that one of the things that uh, uh, must be done is that the UN, actually, that this Euro-Atlantic bond must exist and uh, unity between uh, EU and, um, and the US must remain, you know, on top of what was said. Asymmetric threats ask for asymmetric response. 
Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Manch. 